uh, as Yelena said, I would like to, I will talk about uh, modern product marketing and how it looks like a lot like a product. Um, I will make a loose uh, like parallel just to make it interesting. So don't get me by word that it is a product, but we'll see uh, later on through the presentation how it can be uh, compared and approached uh, uh, to as a product. And, okay, it was working. Okay, sorry. Okay, so uh, for the beginning, I will just introduce myself shortly. Um, I manage marketing um, in international software development company for more than 10 years. And uh, even though it was a software solution development company, uh, we didn't have a product marketing as a function. So um, I initiated that uh, within the organization and uh, facilitated the first cooperations uh, between sales product and marketing. And it was the beginning of a love story, let's say, <laughs> where I really uh, uh, saw that I, I love this area, uh, this marketing approach. Uh, so uh, after the corporate life, I was um, first the uh, first ish uh, product marketing role around five times, usually in B two B solution companies and uh, less in service companies. But also I covered that, and then I uh, founded this uh, Linovate Consulting, you know, with the goal to help companies get more from their product marketing efforts. And before maybe we start, uh, I would like to ask uh, all of you. What do you do if you are um, product managers? And do you have do you work in B two B or B two C uh, companies? And uh, do you have a uh, product marketeer within your team or dedicated for your product, or you're using some like external services um, and so on? So if you can just give me like two three words in the chat, uh, it would be great before we start. Okay, we will continue anyway. So uh, for today, I was thinking about three goals uh, to talk about what product marketing is, uh, how it can be approached to and treated as a product, and hopefully you will uh, walk away with some actionable insights that can help you in your marketing efforts. Uh, before all that, I would like to talk about what product marketing is definitely not. And uh, what I've seen in my private practice mostly is that I'm often called to, you know, make just a brochure for a product or just a pitch deck or just something that will follow that some the product when when it, uh, it is already like in some final phases of development, and definitely it's not like some random act at social media. Uh, it's not content marketing per se, and uh, more often I get used to do some lead generation for products. So it's kind of mix of different uh, things that product marketing is definitely uh, not per se. So. Um, one of the most common misconceptions I see today is that, uh, at least in our market here in Serbia, is that uh, digital marketing is considered the product marketing. And uh, these two things can be like used in practice interchangeably, but they have very, very different uh, place and time in life cycle of all marketing activities and also product activities. So uh, digital marketing and product marketing are definitely two different marketing approaches, uh, but they should have the same goal, of course, at the end, to work for the best of product success. Um, and uh, now let's talk about what it is like a product marketing as a product. We can treat it as uh, two things, like one is marketing function as product organization, very simplified, and the marketing output as a product and start with a function. So um, if you look about uh, the um, uh, expertise or the main knowledge that are today necessary with, within a product uh, marketing role or function, uh, we can focus on these five things. And comparing to product, product organization, where we also have like a product manager, somebody dealing with data, UX designer and copywriter, copywriter somebody dealing with like all the visuals, 
user research and engineering, the production, right? Uh, we can map that to uh, like a marketing, product marketing function where we have a marketing product manager. We have a full final analog, analyst, somebody dealing with all this marketing data. Um, we have, of course, the brand, the designer and copywriter and uh, somebody who's dealing with the research uh, of the audience in the market, competitors as well. And uh, definitely more and more, uh, we see that there are no co no code uh, developer who is very versatile with marketing technologies that can help us build um, better marketing products to serve the for the product success. So when I see like these five circles, it's not five persons within the team, but it's more like five areas of uh, expertise and the knowledge and activities that are uh, desired to be uh, today in a modern product marketing. Uh, so uh, we can then ask like, okay, but what does the product market here actually do? And uh, we do a lot of things. I leave it in a spreadsheet like this on purpose because spreadsheets are our best friends. Uh, and starting from the basic ones, like we do positioning and messaging frameworks, to determine the key benefits of the product or um, describe how our product, product works and how uh, it's helpful and better than the other solution. And um, also uh, make a good license with product teams um, where we serve as a messenger, relying on the product feedback, you know, and making sure that everything that should be marketed is marketed, right? Uh, but beside that, we also do a lot of analysis. Um, I would point like to the most important ones, uh, competitive analysis, where uh, actually we should maintain side by side comparison of uh, features and messages of our competitors. So it's not only like, okay, this competitor has these features and covers these functionalities and we cover these functionalities, but also it goes uh, to the next level of how they actually communicate these functionalities how they position these as advantages and um, to what uh, target audience they're doing it. So it's a lot of research, definitely. And there is more uh, regarding the pricing and packages. Also, we, we should have the data and comparison uh, with uh, different uh, competitors and substitutes as well. Um, and of course, we do some sales enablement content. As I mentioned, it's not just a brochure, it's not just, but it, it is also uh, as one of the outputs is the uh, communication and the tools that are uh, produced to support the sales efforts. Uh, as you can see in practice, uh, sometimes uh, some of these activities probably overlap with uh, product manager manage, product manager's activities. Uh, but if this overlapping is big, then the problem is even bigger because everybody should have their own uh, point of view. Maybe sometimes we do, uh, let's say the same thing, like we analyze competitors, but we do it from the different angles. For example, for product marketeers, it is very important how these competitors is positioned, uh, what they communicate, um, what, uh, how, what tools they use uh, in communication to be present in the market and so on. Uh, so uh, we can say that the successful product market here is a lot of a lot of things. Uh, it is definitely an audience and product expert, uh, no code engineer and web developer. Uh, this is especially a um, big trend now. And the challenge, uh, it can be very overwhelming to know all the new tools uh, like Webflow or some other tools that, that are uh, enabling you to create better and rich content for the product. But this is definitely a trend and we must keep up. So on the other hand, also to be kind of a designer and copywriter, user researcher, data analyst, and of course, marketing technology specialist. And it's not all in one person, but it is more in one definitely. And this is what I see, see also in practice that more of this usually to, um, to main expertise and then some additions to, to, to the role are, uh, making the best best ones. Uh, so uh, that was a talk about product marketing function uh, and similarities to product organization. And uh, now let's talk about what are the outputs of marketing function. Uh, so um, I would like to start with one thing that is 
very important and somehow um in a daily work it gets um we don't get so focused on or we think we are focused on but actually we are only doing the small segments of the audience not thinking about the whole specter of the audience so for the beginning i like to say forget about the product for now and start with the audience for the product so mm, define the audience describe it in the type of companies or teams that will use the solution or um, persons that will use the solution if it's B2B, B2C solution, sorry. And start with the deep audience knowledge first and then build uh, uh, on that the product knowledge and not the other way around, which usually happens in practice because you start, uh, especially if you're like me doing consulting job, you're um, invited to do, to do something with a product and then you learn first everything about a product and it kind of limits you. I believe it, it limits you to, to all the possibilities and uh, useful information that you can get if you analyze the audience first. Uh, so uh, this is a bit uh, even, uh, uh, this is again, the, like the responsibilities of a product marketeer, but from the point of view, if you put the audience first, and I highlighted uh, some that uh, are especially that I especially like um, is that if we talk about product features and benefits, um, you should you should always think about describing them and how they fit in audiences' current workflows and how improves that how it improves their current workflows. Or um, also, if you think about competitive analysis, we should think about. Um, how competitors solve problems for our audience and not just listing like features and messages that they use. And um, uh, also if uh, we talk about audiences interviews or even the research, uh, it is always best to put the product in terms of the whole work day of our audience and then you know get the, the total perspective um, of what they use in their work day, uh, what their problems are and how we fit in this, in this, uh, in the best way. So yeah, spreadsheets are uh, product marketeers' best friends, I believe so, and lots of our work should be done in the form of spreadsheets that are easy to change and easy to, to compare. Um, also, uh, you know, we can go in deep, deep in this, but this was not my point. It was just to show the full scope and how the perspective can be changed. Um, and also in case you see the overlapping with some of the things that product managers do, uh, you can see that if we change the perspective, how it can create some additional value for the product. Um, so also like for the sales enablement content, I always love to see that uh, how our solution uh, fits into the full stack of tools that my audience is using. And then I can, you know, play some comparison and it all comes down later on to the digital marketing. If we remember how you can use that as a strategy in your um, CEO or uh, digital ad advertising and so on, but it needs to be done beforehand. Um, so uh, I, I talk a lot about the audience because I really believe it's, uh, it is uh, one of the um, the starting points uh, when we approach the product as a marketeers. Um, and uh, these are like the highlights of what is important to know about the audience. Um, it is, of course, we need to know their goal, goals and problems, but uh, it should go beyond the scope of uh, your product. And this is something that also in practice, um, I see um, kind of leaning to that we map uh, our uh, benefits of our product that we map it to uh, the uh, audience's goals and problems instead the other way around to look at the full picture and then how we match how we match to that uh, and of course to see like what are the tools they, they are using how it fits in the uh, lives and workflows and uh, also not to forget that when we do the competitive anal analysis we should always always do the compared uh, complementary, uh, analyze the complementary product uh, because um, this is something that is usually overseen, especially in an early stage um, startups, for example. Um, and and uh, it can be a very big uh, problem later on, if discovered later on. Um, so uh, 
I'm not going to go through all of this. I was just the goal of this slides, if you next to few slides was just to show you how this audience audience analysis is done. And uh, basically, of course, it's spreadsheet sheet. It has some main segments, and then we think about the overall audience and a specific segment within that audience uh, when we come down to the uh, feature and benefits for each segment. And also uh, when doing the competitive analysis, uh, beside like um, shorting from the business and the positioning um, and, and describing the product, it also should be like aligned and matchable with all our competitors or uh, complementary solutions. Um, that at the end should give us some spectrum on where we are against our competitors. And um, I also like I, I like to define some attributes uh, and con contrasting attributes. It can be anything that you agree on and that you see uh, about your product, but it can be the cost. Um, is it built for and who is it built for? Is it does it require um, very complicated integration or not? And so on. So. Um, Somewhere in that, we, we define where we are and where vectors are, and it can actually give us a lots of lots of insight about our, let's say, creative marketing steps that come later on. Um, so we talked lots, I, I talked a lot about the audience and how the audience analysis is done. Um, and uh, all this should be right put in some form of a marketing strategy. This is very oversimplified way whether they put it in the three categories but um first one is definitely where the all the analysis is fit and where uh, based on that we find our place right and um, we out of that we get our uh, basic positioning uh, basic positioning means that we know what it is who is it for and why it's better and Instead of that, usually I see that uh, why it's better if changed with uh, what it does or even worse, how it works. So this is definitely not something that should go in a good positioning. Uh, good positioning should show why we are better than our competitive segment. Um, so this is one part of the strategy to be defined. Uh, uh, the second part is uh, more related to how we're going to be present at the market, how we're going to sell, uh, define our go-to-market go uh, strategy and business model, how we, are we freemium, premium, whatever is our, our uh, desired um, option. And of course, uh, today it's like lots of um, discussion about product-led or sales-led gro uh, growth and um, hybrid models that are somewhere in between. It basically depends on, um, on the size of uh, marketing or sales and the size of investments that somebody wants to put in one or, or the other. And also I would say the first thing to think about is how hard is to onboard on the solution. If the onboarding, if it's like um, a solution HR tool that requires, um, it's not so easily to, to, to onboard uh, users and then uh, all the data from the company, then it should probably be sales led because um, we cannot expect users to go through complicated options and and, uh, and just start using um, something like that. So, um, and this is like the set, all of this is one like the second, second pillar of marketing strategy. And the third one is uh, definitely to find uh, what is our unfair advantage uh something what is unfair advantage something that can give us a head start that can drive growth um and they there there is like if you google you will get like a list of uh, 10 or 15 um unfair advantages that are most most common uh so like product virality trend or regulation i really like that because <laughs> regulation is pushing the usage right so it's kind of easier uh or channel partnership and uh, this is something that you should focus activities on um, these advantages in the beginning. And um, also I like to, uh, uh, when, when looking at the overall marketing activities for a product, um, look, having in mind all these unfair advantages, 
I like to uh, revolve one, like let's say bigger marketing projects around that, which means it's more complete. It's last for a quarter or something like that. So as I said at the beginning, this is oversimplified view of the product marketing strategy, but uh, I hope it gave you insight on what three main categories uh, should be should be there. Um, and then when we talk about how, okay, how the strategy is going to be uh, implemented or how it's going to live, um, I like to think in terms of uh, fuel and engine and some, everything that is like content, copy, brand, creative, uh, it is fuel. And everything that is channel optimization and analytics and so on, uh, it is the engine. And the biggest, let's say, um, success is to find the balance between these two um, uh, because if we have all fuel no engine then all of our content and all of our design and all of our um, digital is like uh, just like lost effort and um, other way around we, we have great channels for distribution but we don't have something meaningful to add to it, it's also a waste of opportunity. Um, so also when thinking about uh, this uh, first part, let's say creative a bit part, uh, it's not just, I'm not talking only about blog posts or content per se, but um, that's when this modern marketing um, as a product comes in, uh, in place that if we do the no code development, we can build our, ourselves, we can build some um, valuable tools that uh, can drive some um, significant impact or leads for our product. So like we should think about calculators or Sigma templates or webflow pages or something or notion that can be used and replicated by our audience. Um, and each of these fuel pieces should uh, contribute to, of course, the bigger goal, uh, bigger goal for the product. And um, one imp important thing is to always stay on perceptions that are agreed. So we don't fall into the trap of a content factory that we produce and produce and produce, but actually we, we have these uh, not aligned or not consistent perceptions that we want to build. And um, even though it just put here like two bullet points, uh, goals and perceptions, actually it can be developed into uh, like two mini frameworks that can then daily be used um, to, to, to know if we are, if everything we do is on track with the final goal we agreed on. Um, so um, that was on how to support the strategy. Uh, and, uh, I would just like make this uh, also simply a uh, comparison that why product marketing is like product. It has audience, users, it has job to do. Definitely it has job to do like features and uh, it adds value and solves some problems. It has a purpose it should fulfill. Um, and it has definitely distribution maintenance. And especially what I like is recycling options. Uh, and changing one type of content uh, or one type of tool that we develop into something else, um, followed by um, KPIs and total life cycle of that marketing uh, product, right? Um, and just for the end, because I didn't see, uh, I, I didn't see uh, what, in what, um, uh, where uh, the audience comes from and the, do you have a marketeer you work with in your team or uh, you have um, you cooperate with the marketing communications team within the company or you have to uh, hire an external agency um, I just wanted to put it as that um, in case you don't you have a product but you don't have a marketing for that product uh, you should choose wisely who you hire for your first uh, marketeer uh, because um, it's easy to fall in to fall in the digital marketing trap. Even though I have much respect for my digital colleagues, but um, uh, when it's placed in the right timing and with the right knowledge that comes before before the whole uh, digital thing, 
so uh, today we also saw, saw that uh, what are the responsibilities of product marketing managers um, and um, we saw how audience first approach can give a different angle on look of looking at those responsibilities. And uh, one, uh, if I would say, I have to say this one most common thing is, uh, one common mistake of uh, marketing is uh, to be all activities and low impact. So always try to search for uh, impact over the activity and um, see, see how it goes. Um, so uh, my presentation was not so long uh, because it was the last during the day and I hope uh, that uh, it was not uh, too much. Uh, also, thank you all for uh, joining me, uh, even if, it, especially since it's the, the end of the day. And uh, now if any of you have any questions, um, let's, let's go to that. Uh, yeah, I don't see any questions. Yelena, can you just... Yes, I don't see anything in the chat for now. But okay. if somebody has something to, to add or to share your thoughts or something to, to ask additionally uh, towards the presentation that you want to pr just uh, present, please write. If not now, I will. I'm always available at LinkedIn, or uh, there is my email uh, in the first slide. So if any afterthoughts, uh, I will be happy happy to to talk to you. Okay, I already shared in the chat the voting link for a fast feedback. Please, it will be okay. very valuable for us to to receive there was some short. Uh, uh, thinking about the, the presentation and just jump in, put your words and that's it. Okay. Okay. With this okay, talk, so, uh, yes, yes, you can. I just wanted to thank uh, everybody for, for joining and especially thank to Anna and the community team for giving me the opportunity for this presentation. And of course, uh, special thanks to you, Yelena, for uh, hosting hosting the session. Thank you. I want to thank also for uh, to our particip uh, participants and to you on this great presentation and to invite everybody maybe to join us on the main room uh, just for closing the conference. And after that, uh, we will see each other in uh, ICT Hub. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye.